Okay, today I want to show you how to use this LED ring light, which should be used together with the rotary encoder, or as in my case, with the potentiometer inside. And so as I turn the potentiometer, I show the value with the LED being lit. I also have a second mode where the LEDs are filling up to the value of the potentiometer. So today I will show you how to use this ring light together with the Arduino Uno without any other components, I mean, except for the potentiometer and wires and some resistors. And of course a breadboard, because even when this module is not supposed to be used with the breadboard, you can bend those long pins and squeeze it in. So let's get started. And the first thing before using this ring light is understanding how we can light up a single LED. Because after all, this ring light is just a collection of small LEDs arranged around the circle. To visualize what's going on, I will be using Quokvi, which is a free online Arduino emulator, and in here I will add the LED and move it down here. So in order to light up the LED, we need to connect the anode to the power supply, for example 5 volts, and the cathode to the ground. So as I do so and start the simulation, you can see that now the LED is shining, but we want to of course control whether the LED is shining or not, and for that we can use those digital pins up top, because we can control whether the digital pin produces 1 or 0, meaning a ground or 5 volts. So let's just disconnect the LED and try to connect it to the digital pins, and for that I'll rotate the Arduino board, and maybe also flip the LED. And as for the pins, let's for example use pin 2 for anode, and pin 3 for cathode. Inside the sketch, I will make sure that those two pins are set to output, calling the pin mode function, so pin mode for pin 2 should be output, and the same case should be for the pin 3, and then I can set the pin to 0 or 5 volt by calling digital write function, so for the pin number 2 it should be high, it should be 5 volts, and for pin number 3 it should be low, it should be ground. And running the simulation now, I can see the LED shining, and if I pass the simulation, I can see the state of the pins, so I can see that the pin number 2 is set to high, and pin number 3 is set to low. If I don't want the LED to shine, I can set also the pin number 2 to low, so both will be ground, and if I add a small delay, for example 1 second, 1000 milliseconds, before and after that, I will get a simple blinking sketch. So now the LED is shining, the pin number 2 is high, pin number 3 is low, and now it's not shining because both pins are set to low state. So we know how to blink an LED, but our ring light has 32 individual LEDs, and we only have 14 digital pins on the Arduino Uno, ranging from 0 up to 13. And if we want to control multiple LEDs with the available pins, we can use what's called the multiplexing. And for that, it's important to understand that we are using two digital pins, which could be either low or high, which gives us four different options. We've already used the high and low, and low and low, but we actually have two more options. First pin could be low, and the second pin could be high, and the last combination is that both pins are high. If I restart the simulation, now the LED is shining, it's high and low. Now it's not shining, it's low and low. If it's low and high, it's also not shining. And finally, if it's high and high, it's also not shining. So we have four different combinations, but only one of those is setting the LED to be shining. So let's keep that in mind, and let's try to control multiple LEDs. Let's delete the wires for now, and let's just copy and paste the LED multiple times, for example, three by three times, so one, two, three, and then again, one, two, three, and one, two, three, which will result in having nine different LEDs. What I will do is for all the columns, I will connect the anodes together, and for all the rows, I will connect the cathodes together. So again, for example, using the pin number two, I will connect the anode for the first LED, also the anode of the next LED, and the last LED in the same column, and I will do the same thing for the second column. So this will be, for example, pin number three, which will be shared with all the anodes in the third column, and finally for the third column, I will be using pin number four four again shared across all the LEDs in the same column. I can also click on the wire and change the color if I want to make it more obvious what's going on. And then I can also connect the cathodes. So for the cathodes in the same row, I will connect those to the same pin. For example, the first row will be connected to pin number 5, the second row I can connect to pin number 6, and the last row I can connect to pin number 7. With everything nicely connected and colored, let's set all the pins to outputs. And for now, let's set all the pins to the low state. Obviously, if I run the simulation now, nothing is shining because all those pins are set to low, to ground, but I think that if I set the pin number 2 to high, I should be lighting up this LED. So let's try to set the pin number 2 to high and see what happens. And I can see that this LED is shining, but also those two other LEDs are shining, which is not what I want. And that's because this is high and all those other pins are low, meaning that there is 5 volts on this anode and ground on this cathode, and then 5 volts on this anode and ground on this cathode. 
and if I only want this first LED to be shining, I need to set the anode and cathode for those LEDs to be in the combination that it doesn't produce any light. And I need this pin number 2 to be high, so the first LED is shining, which means that the anode for this LED and for this LED will also be high, so I need to change the cathode in a way that it doesn't produce any light. So choosing from one of those four combinations, if I also set the cathode to be high, so both anode and cathode will be high, this LED should not be shining, so the cathode is connected to the pin number 6. So let's just set the pin number 6 to high, and this cathode is connected to pin number 7, so let's also set this pin number 7 to high. And hopefully when I restart the simulation now, I can see that only this first LED is shining. Let's try to manually toggle every single LED in this array with some kind of delay. So I'll create a new delay type of integer, for example, 200 milliseconds. And I will call the delay of this time, of this delay time in between setting the LEDs. And let's continue with the other LEDs. So for this one to light up, we need to set the anode pin number 3 to high. And we can set this anode back to low. So pin number 2 should be back to low. So now we have those three LEDs shining and we can continue like this. We will set pin 3 to low and this anode pin number 4 to high. For the next row, we will set the same values for pins 2, 3 and 4, but for the cathode, now the pin number 6 should be low. So let's just copy those 3, set number pin to be back high, and pin number 6 should be low. And that will light up also the next row. The last one should be pretty straightforward, now the pins 5 and 6 should be high, and common cathode on the pin number 7 should be low. Now we can set every individual LED, and to show everything at once, we can lower the delay time. So if I lower it for example to 15 milliseconds, you will see a lot of blinking. And if I continue like this to maybe like only 2 milliseconds, at some point it looks like all the LEDs are shining, but we are still controlling them one by one. And that's pretty much how multiplexing works, and how we can control multiple LEDs. Except for our ring light, we have 32 LEDs which are divided into 4 different groups. So we have 8 common anodes and 4 common cathodes, resulting in 8 plus 4 wires, so we have total of 12 pins. And thankfully that I've ordered this module from AliExpress, I've also received this datasheet which shows the connection as well as those individual pins. So at this point it's just figuring out which pin is which. So for example the anode for the first LED for the LED1 is called L1 and this one is connected to the physical pin number 8 on the LED light. The cathode for the first LED is C1 and that one is connected to the physical pin number 9. You can see that the first pin is here and it goes clockwise to pin number 12 but this is a bottom view. So if you look at the module from the top, the pin number 1 is actually on the right side and it goes counterclockwise to the pin number 12 which is on the left side. So let's try to squeeze it on the breadboard and try to light up one LED using the Arduino Uno. For this I'm using this prototyping shield which will snap directly on the Arduino Uno and it also includes this small breadboard. Again, the pins are not aligned with the breadboard, but they are quite long, so I can probably bend them and somehow squeeze them in some holes. And so once it's in there, I need to locate pins 8 and 9. Again, the 8 is anode and the 9 is cathode. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is pin number 8 and this is pin number 9. And I will connect both the pins to any of the digital pins on the Arduino Uno, and just in case use a resistor for the cathode. So in my case the cathode is connected to pin number 2 and the anode is connected to pin number 13. Let's jump into the Arduino IDE and do some quick tests. So for our pins 2 and 13 we will also set those two outputs and then inside the loop we will just digital write to pin number 2 value of low. So this is the common cathode and to pin number 13 we will set this to high. So this is the anode for the first LED and then upload it to the Arduino board. And as you can see the first LED is shining so it's working just fine. Now it's just a question of connecting all the other pins to the digital pins on the Arduino board. We have 14 pins available, but pins 0 and 1 are also used for the serial communication, and in some cases it's better to not use them. But even without those pins, we still have 12 pins, which matches the number of pins on the LED ring. And so once everything is connected, we can jump back to the Arduino IDE. It kind of makes sense to put those pins into arrays, so I'll call the first array being the pin C for common cathodes, and I will populate this array with the values, so the first one was 2, and then values based on the connection on the breadboard, and let's call the next array pin L, that will be for anodes, and the first one was 13, and then I've randomly chosen some pins which were closest to the pins on the LED ring. I will create a loop to go over all those pins in both arrays, so for loop for integer i equals 0, while the i is smaller than 4, I will increase i, and I will set those pins to outputs, and also set them to low state, so digital write of the pin i being the low, and then do the same thing for anodes. And of course I cannot do this for pin number i, I need to reference the pin number from those arrays, so pin c array of the index i, and pin l array of the index i in the second loop. 
let's create a new variable that will hold the value and let's call this show value and then inside our loop function i want to go over every single led and if it equals the show value i will light up the led so i will copy the for loop for the cathode and what i want to do is i want to digital write of the cathode of the index i to be low but at the same time i want to set all the other cathodes to the high state so if i set the first cathode to low i want to set the next one to high as well as the next one and the next one so this will be plus two and plus three however we still want to keep the index inside the range of zero to three so what i can do also is to just module this by four and it will make sure that the index will be always in the range of zero to three so once i go over all the cathodes i want to also go over all the anodes let's copy the for loop for the led pins and let's just change the variable name for example to j we will light up the led by quickly setting the pin to high and then back to low and of course the index should be j and let's include some very small delay for example only one millisecond but we only want to light up the led when the led number is matching the show value number so i will say that if the show value number equals the led number and for every cathode we have eight different leds so the i should be multiplied by eight plus j that's the led number only in this case we will light up the led now the show value is currently set to zero so let's just increase it one by one and if i just say that the show value should increase by one that will be probably way too fast so i will add a new integer value called time and inside my main loop i will just increase the time plus one then if the time is bigger than some value for example 100 only now i will increase the show value so the show value should be show value plus one and if i say module 33 it will always go between 0 and 32 and then of course set the time back to zero actually there's one thing that i've missed those inactive cathodes shouldn't be low they should be high instead so one more change and one more upload and now the led is going around the full circle as a final step let's try to control the led with the potentiometer as you can see i already have this placed inside the led light and it was kind of challenging because i'm putting two of the pins through the pins of the potentiometer and they should not be touching it's probably hard to see but i've used a little bit of electric tape to make sure that those pins are not connected and then since the potentiometer is not connected to the breadboard i'm using jumper wires to connect it directly to the arduino board I will be using the pin A0 to measure the voltage, so the middle pin of the potentiometer should go to the pin A0, and then one of the pins should go to 5 volt, and the other pin should go to ground. It doesn't quite matter which is which, because if the potentiometer is rotating in the opposite direction, you can always switch those. Inside the Arduino IDE, inside a setup function, I will set the pin mode of the pin A0 to be the input, so we can read the analog value, the voltage of the potentiometer. And then inside the loop function, I don't want to change the show value. Instead, I want to read the potentiometer value. And for that, I will create a new variable called potentiometer value and use the function analog read to read the value of the pin A0. And that will produce a value between 0 and 1024. But we want this value to be going from 0 to 31. So for our show value, I will remap it using the map function. I will remap the potentiometer value, which goes again between 0 and 1023. And I will to remap it between 0 and 31 instead and then as usual upload it to the arduino board and as i turn the potentiometer now the light is now following my movement which is kind of cool effect i really like how this looks like you have the immediate response to your action and if i turn the potentiometer to the maximum value i'm lighting up this small dot so let's make one last change to our sketch and that is to fill the gauge with the leds and this change is actually quite simple all we have to do is to change this if statement so instead of saying if the show value equals the led number we will change this to if the show value is bigger or equal than the led number and then again upload this to arduino and just like that the gauge is now filling but as i approach those higher values you can see there is a lot of blinking because one millisecond delay is still a long delay so instead what i can do is call a different function called delay microseconds and make it half the time so 500 microseconds will be half of the millisecond and hopefully this will help with blinking it also means that now the leds are dimmer than they used to be because we are lighting them for a shorter period of time so at this point we probably don't even have to use resistors if i shorten those wires you can see that this section is much brighter but still not that bright that it will damage those leds and that's it for today but before you close this video let me tell you one thing and that's kind of important and you probably know it already driving the leds in this way with arduino uno makes no sense 
Once you add more code to your sketch, it will change the timing and it will be very hard for the Arduino Uno to keep up and keep those LEDs updated. And that's the reason why there are chips specifically designed to drive multiplexing LEDs. But more about them next time. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.